In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down ARCHICAD 26 to an absolute basic level. If you've never used ARCHICAD before in your life, this video right here is for you. Well, in a rather fitting turn of events for this video in particular, I've just gone ahead and recorded this entire video and realized the audio was not recording. So today we will break down ARCHICAD for dummies, including me, and go through this for the second time in a row. Hopefully this time it'll be a little bit more concise and better articulated, so let's dive on in. What you'll see when you open up ARCHICAD 26, regardless of the template, is you'll see a number of windows open on either side. To the left hand side, which you can drag it out as you see fit, we have our main toolbar for creating everything in 3D and 2D. On the right hand side, we have our navigator as well as individual areas of our view map, our layout book, and our entire exporter as well. For the purpose of this, let's stay to the project map. Let's not dive in too deep just yet. You'll also see I have a number of extras activated. So if we come up to our window at the top, go to toolbars, you'll see everything that I've activated if you'd like to go ahead and activate this for yourself. In the palettes, I've also activated the renovation and the trace reference as well. I've placed my trace and reference up the top right hand corner, my renovations in the bottom right hand corner. Now let's dive into creating some very basic 3D architecture so you can understand the principles. Let's start with our walls and make sure that we are on our ground floor. If we zoom in to our 000, zero point, which is this little X in the corner, we can click once to start dragging and drawing a wall. If we tap the P button, we can flip that wall however we like. And if we hold the shift button, it will make sure it is dead straight. Clicking again, we will activate the second portion of the wall. If for whatever reason your wall clicks for the second time and finishes, up the top in the geometry method, you can change how you like the wall to operate. In this case, I have it set to a polygonal wall, which allows me to click multiple times. So let's continue to click shift once more, finish off our wall and align it with the edge. If we click the third time, and just before we finish clicking off that wall, we can see that this wall is 12,068 millimeters long. But if for whatever reason, we only wanted to make it five meter box, we could just simply type in five meters, press enter, and it would create a five meter long wall. In this instance, I don't want that. Press the backspace button, finish it off, we have our beautiful wall created almost instantly. If we try to select one of these walls, you'll see they're grouped. So hitting the escape, option G or alt G allows you to ungroup so you can quickly activate just one section of that wall. Option alt G again regroups them. Having these walls selected, you'll see they are on a structural load bearing walls layer. They can go on whatever layer you define as purposeful and fit for purpose. We also have it as just a generic wall shell. We can change that to whatever we like, let's say, we want a 100 mil insulated plaster brick, it will automatically change our wall type so we don't have to go ahead 100 times, flip and change. If we want the brick on the inside rather than the timber on the inside, tap that P button and it will automatically change. Tap that P button again, it flips it once again. The best thing about 3D BIM software is you can simply come into 3D and you'll quickly see those four lines that we drew have automatically come up as a 3D object. We can manipulate it, change it in 3D, or we can change it in 2D however we really like. So coming back to our ground floor plan, you're gonna see we don't really have a slab level or a footings level. So if I press Command 7, we'll activate our story settings. By default, we have a couple stories already created, but we have a ground floor and that's really about it. What I wanna do is insert one below. Let's call this footings. Let's go minus 100 millimeters, and let's also include a roof layer. Now pressing OK, You'll see on the right hand side, our organizer has changed to reflect those changes, but our window has also changed. So double click on the ground floor will automatically take you back to where we were a minute ago. Get it this far into the tutorial today, you've probably already noticed the desk mat behind me. The best thing about the tutorial today is the very simple fact that mat and a series of other mats are available in the first link in the description down below. But otherwise, if you're enjoying the tutorial so far, make sure you hit that like button, the smash the subscribe button, and if you have any questions along the way, either drop a comment down below or join our Discord group chat. The Discord group chat is completely free to join and it is filled with architectural professionals, students, and everybody in the field from around the world. We now wanna go ahead and draw the slab below because obviously you don't wanna just fall through the bottom of your building. So command down will move us up and down this organizer on the right hand side. Command up, command down, however we like. Staying on the footings floor, tapping our slab button, 
right clicking on ground floor show as trace. It will beautifully replicate that butter paper effect that we're so used to with 2D manual drawing and give us that projection of what is on that level. We can select that for any level, however we see fit. It is just in this instance that we need the ground floor. So let's zoom in, click on the edge of our brickwork, zoom out, zoom back in, click again on the edge of our brickwork. We've drawn what seems to be a square, but if we come into our 3D, you see that that square is a full 3D slab. If we select that slab, we can then do whatever we want with it. So Command T will open up the slab selection settings. If we want to change the type of slab, we can change it to an insulated concrete floor with 10 mil tile, press OK. And there we go, the material has changed as well. We've changed the profile and the material of the slab. If we go Command T again to open up those settings, and let's say we didn't like those tiles, we can click on override surface material, search for tile. Let's say we want a 600 by 1200 tile, click OK, and there we go, we've updated those tiles very rapidly and very easily. On the other hand, this slab is sitting quite low. You can see the 10 millimeters of tile, a little bit of screed in the concrete below. So if we press the Command D button to activate our move tool, we can select the blue reference line, click that once, hold Shift, and drag it to the underside of the brickwork. So now our tiles actually sit on the inside of the brick and our concrete slab is what the actual structure is sitting on. That's getting a little bit technically detailed and it's not that important when you're starting out in ArcCAD, but it is good to know that you can move these slabs however you see fit. You can also just click on the slab, click on any one of those nodes, a floating toolbar will automatically appear. You can then hover over it to see what each one of these options does and it will tell you what they do. If I wanted to offset all edges, activate that, and then let's offset it by one meter by typing in a meter, it will simply shrink that slab in. Like all other software, Control Z, Command Z will undo your last action. Option and Command or Alt and Command Z will then redo that last action as well. So like every other software, it is very basic from an undo, redo perspective. If we double click back on our ground floor plan, we now have four walls and a slab. We don't have any doors, we don't have any windows. ArchiCAD makes that stupidly simple. So on the left hand side again, you'll see we have our doors and our windows. Let's click on our door, Command T, open up those settings, and it'll give you a variety of doors available on the left at your disposal without having to go and rechange any of the door styles. So let's say I like that door. I click OK, and then I simply click, click, drag, drop, wherever I need it to be. Ideally, I like the sun to be on the outside and then place it wherever I like to work. So if I want to swing in or out, as long as the sun is positioned in the correct space, it doesn't matter. The same principle applies to the window. So select window, open the Command T settings, Control T settings, select which window you like. Let's say I like that one for whatever reason. Click it once, click it again, and continue that process until I've had enough of creating windows. We come into our 3D option view settings. You'll see that I've created multiple doors, multiple windows in a matter of seconds. I don't have to redraw it. I don't have to change it. It's all updated in real time. Now, this window right here. Let's say for whatever reason, this window, I don't like the material of it. Command T opens up the settings once more. Up the top, we have three different viewpoints and settings of how this window will actually be seen in 3D. So let's say we go to the generic 3D model. Let's say we don't want the main sash to be a top hung mirror, we want it to be a bottom hung window. And we don't want the side light to be fixed, we want that to be a tilt turn window. If we then click on the title of this layer setting, we get a variety of different settings which you can go through in your own time as you see fit. But let's jump to model attributes and then we can go ahead and change our material. For whatever reason, let's say we want that to be a metal steel window. So we just simply change the materials of what we want to be steel. It's all changed. Press OK. Tap Escape and that window is now a steel window. Now you'll also notice that I've only done that for one window. I haven't done that for the rest of the windows and it would look really odd. It would be extremely time consuming to click on one window, press Command T, go through all their settings again and update it. Instead, I'll hold the Option button, click on my window once, hold the Option Command button, and then click on another window, and it will automatically copy and paste all of those settings from one to another in a matter of seconds. The same principle applies to doors and windows. Let's say we just add a French leaf, press OK, and then we want that door to be the same, 
we just repeat those same steps. Hold option once, click, hold option command, click. Now, so far we have four walls, some windows and some walls, but no roof. So let's double click on our roof layer, right click, show us trace for the ground floor so we still know what we're drawing. Go to our roof plan, and we can select either the single pane geometry or the multi-pane geometry. In this case, I'm just gonna create a very basic hip and valley roof. So let's select this one. I don't want it to be at 45 degrees pitch. That's a very steep hut. So I'm gonna drop that to 25 degrees and I want it to be on the actual roof level, which is zero. Then I'm simply gonna draw another square. Instantly, we have some sort of shape created. Come back into 3D to see what we've done. And we have a full 3D house in a matter of minutes. Now it's all well and good that we have a 3D model, but how do we actually document that? How do we take that further? So now let's jump back into our ground floor plan and zoom out a little bit. You'll see we have four markers around this house. These are our elevation markers. And if we wanna move them, we can press Command D when we've had them selected and move them individually to wherever we really like them to be on the page. So now if I zoom back in, you'll see my elevation markers are quite close. If I double click on my elevations on the right hand side, you'll see a 2D projection of that elevation perfectly done and updated as you work. The story settings on the left and right are projected from our command seven story settings. By unticking these boxes here and pressing OK, they will completely disappear. If we go command seven again, and only want to show our roof and ground floor settings for some sort of perspective and scale, press OK, we'll understand that that is three meters above and that is exactly what we've drawn. A bit of an advanced technique, if you go Command 7, drop that down to two meters, press OK, it will automatically drop your roof level, squish it down and adjust that. Because in this instance, this wall, Command T, open up the settings, is linked to our roof we can adjust and change that height instantly without having to go back and repeat all of those steps. So let's go back to command seven, repeat that in the opposite direction. Let's go five meters and there we go. Our walls have instantly stretched all the way and maintained their roof position. Bringing it back to three meters for proportion's sake, that's what we like our house to be and we've gone ahead and created our first elevation. We usually do a lot of work in these elevations in 2D unfortunately. So if we come down to our documentation tools along the bottom left, we can go to our polyline and start drawing a line. So let's point to this roof, double click on it, escape, click on that polyline. Let's activate an arrowhead, change that arrowhead to whatever we want it to look like and change the color to whatever color we'd like. Then we can scroll down, find our text tool, come across, type in roof, whatever you want to type in, it's completely up to you and drag and drop that text box in the polyline. Just like any other text box in any other software, you have alignment tools, you have color tools, all at the top to your disposal. You can change the text height from two to mils to three mils, command D to move that text box around and do whatever you want for this entire project. Now, on an elevation, typically you annotate only architectural elements. You don't go ahead and document structural. What instead you document is your roof color, your roof tiles, your roof shingles, whatever they are, your window frames, your window selections, etc. You wouldn't go ahead and go trust roof to manufacturer specifications, blah, blah, blah. You'd stick to just the architectural side of things. For the structural side of things, we come back to our ground floor plan and hit our section viewpoint on the left. Let's simply draw a section right through this middle of the house. The arrow that activates after you've double clicked is showing a projection of where you wanna look. So let's say we wanna look that way of the house, click once and our section is created. You'll see that a little drop down arrow appears here in our navigator as well and that section has automatically been created again. If we zoom in, like I mentioned before, Archicad has automatically set up intersection priorities so our wall will sit on our slab and it will cut through that tile and screed so it is automatically drawn correctly for you. Now sections, like I mentioned a second ago, are a structural detail. You wanna go into some structural information and you don't really wanna see any of these colors. So if we come back, ground floor, activate our section command T, we can go to our uncut elements, click nothing, press OK, and then come back to our section to automatically change everything to a very detailed black and white image without any colors or pretty pictures. If we were doing this for a presentation purpose, that would be different, but in this instance, it is more for a structural detailing point of view. But you might be thinking at this stage, wait, David, you've got a box with nothing inside it. Well, if I double click on my ground floor plan, I can then simply go back to my wall tool and change my wall type 
to whatever I'd like. So let's go to a 50 mil block work cavity. Let's draw some random walls inside. Let's subdivide this space however I want. I have no idea what this building is, but that is not the purpose of this tutorial. Now we have rooms. Then we can come into our object on the left hand side, open up our object tool and select what we need to showcase inside. Let's say we need a toilet. We double click on our toilet, press OK, drop our toilet in, repeat those same steps for a shower and a vanity basin. And then we have three objects for plumbing. Now, if we select all three objects by holding the shift button, you'll see that they're an interior furniture. Now, they're not furniture, in, at least in my experience, they should belong under mechanical, electrical and plumbing under the plumbing layer. Then we wanna move them into some sort of unique position, command or control D and place them wherever we see fit. If we wanna rotate, command E, hold shift, allows us to rotate. Command M allows us to mirror if we click once or twice. And there we go, we've got now a little bathroom at the back of this other room that I have no idea what it is. If we then wanna put another door in, we repeat those same steps, drop a door, and that's not the right door for this instance, so open up the door, command T. Let's find a different door. That one looks good, let's make it solid. Press OK, door done. So let's say we wanna just see this toilet. Let's go marquee, select the darker one so we see everything up and down. Select the inside, right click, show marquee in 3D. And now we have our toilet marqueed in 3D with our roof above, our walls drawn, our slab down, and we can see just that section. Tapping escape a couple of times, right click, show all in 3D quickly brings back our entire house. Now you might be thinking, why are those layers so important and why am I going on about them already? Now, let's say we don't like this roof. Command or Control L opens up our layers. Let's type in roof, untick our roof, press OK. That roof disappears and you can see everything a bit better. Let's say I don't wanna see my plumbing. Let's repeat that, plumbing, hide, OK. All of our plumbing is gone. Now it isn't gone, gone, it isn't deleted. It's literally just hidden from plain sight. So then if I come back in and undo those moves, we can then repeat back to our original what we saw a second ago. Now let's imagine you've done everything. You've created your sections, you've created your elevations, you've put all the information you need to, you wanna export it as a PDF. You wanna come across back to your view map organizer and double click on the publisher set. Archicad by default sets everything up. So double click on ground floor plan, you'll see that a ground floor plan has already been dragged and dropped positioned on that page perfectly. If it isn't for whatever reason, you can come back to your navigator, drag, drop, and it will import whatever viewpoint you've actually requested in. If you wanna know more about how to create your own title blocks or how to export to PDF, make sure you check out my other videos because I've gone through that in detail. But today is literally just a very basic scenario of how to get from nothing to an export a PDF in a matter of minutes. Speaking of export a PDF, there's multiple ways to export to a PDF, but one of my personal favorites is to actually activate the organizer tool. So let's go up the top, window, palettes, and open up our organizer. You'll see that we have a number of layouts already created, publishing sets, views, and our entire publishing set. So for me personally, I'm gonna tap the new button and I'm gonna go PDF exports. Double click on PDF exports to open that up. Create a new folder, let's call this sketch 01. And then I wanna drag my ground floor and my elevations directly into that space. I can then right click on that folder, publishing properties. Let's save that to my desktop. Press OK, make sure I merge them to one PDF so you don't get all the pages individually unless you want that. Tap publish, wait a few seconds for it to export out. Find that document in your desktop or wherever you've saved it. Scroll through and there you go. You've created a full 3D model in ArcCAD exported to PDF, ready to print in a matter of seconds. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me with more great architectural content. If you love the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.